Let's find you here. Okay, well, just welcome everybody tonight to our uh, September town board meeting. First order of business, I'd like to do the pledge. Everybody, please stand up. And we we'll repeat the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the and republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty Okay, thank you very much. Okay, the next uh, item would be the uh, annual public hearing regarding the proposed 2020 sewer assessment role. And with us tonight is our, <laughs> our assessor who sets the uh, role. And I just asked Todd Wiley if he would uh, make a little presentation in the public, and then we'll open a public hearing after that. Yeah, once a year we're required to uh, publish the sewer assessment role because it ties into your tax bill uh, that comes in January, the town and county tax bill. If you're in a sewer district in the town of New Windsor, there is a line item on your tax bill. Um, typically it's $15, $20 a year for a one family house. Uh, it's based on a point system. All the one families are charged 10 points, two families are charged 20 points and so on. There's a schedule for all the different property types in the town. Uh, we publish the assessment roll. And tonight would be the public's opportunity, uh, their, their last opportunity to challenge it. For example, if somebody felt that they were not in the district and they were not benefited by the um, uh, sewage service, uh, tonight would be their final opportunity to challenge it. Um, typically, we don't have any challenges because we monitor uh, the sewer points year round. We, we get copies of the building permits, demolition permits, and we make adjustments as needed. So that's the purpose of the public hearing. I'm here to take any questions or comments uh, that anybody from the public might have. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll turn it over to the public if you have any comments or questions now. You will wait a minute or two to see if anybody has any questions or comments. It's kind of a routine thing we do every year. It's not much of an impact to most, but many of the taxpayers. Anybody from, from the public on the call that would like to talk to the sewer assessor role, you can go ahead and unmute right now and, and talk. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to guess that this no one wants to speak to the sewer assessor role. So before I close the public hearing, just so we know who's here with us tonight. We have our, our town town board, Andrew Riggenbaum, Steve Moreau, Sylvia Santiago, Stephen Bedetti. We have our uh, town clerk with us, Kelly Allegra, and also our uh, town attorney. And we have Patrick Mangan, who likes to be introduced. He's in charge of IT. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I guess no one wants to pipe in on this. Okay, Chair Lenten, the motion town board town wins to close the public hearing in the matter of proposed sewer assessment role. Move. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum. Yes. Councilman Monroe. Yes. Councilman Bedetti. Yes. Councilwoman Santiago. Yes. Supervisor Myers. Yes. Chair Lente, motion town board town in which adopt the 2020 sewer assessment role and the town clerk be authorized to advertise for the same as required by law. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Okay. Assessor so, so Wiley, it's up to you. We want to hang around and get yeah, stay with us. Okay. Yeah. All right, the next item on the agenda is a public hearing regarding uh, Stewart Hill Industrial Park LLC, a request for administrative relief from the uh, moratorium. So is there someone from uh, Stewart Hill? There's someone here, yes? Yes. And just state your name. Uh, I'm uh, Rob Rospero with Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah on behalf of the applicant. And with me is uh, our engineer, Joe Fowle. 
Okay, so we'll give you a few minutes to make a presentation. Sure. Okay. So, <laughs> great. Thank you very much for, for having us, uh, Mr. Supervisor and members of the board. We do appreciate your time. So my clients uh, have requested relief from the moratorium. This, this project was proposed a long ways ago and was fully reviewed by the planning board, resulting in a secret neg negative declaration uh, and, and an approval at the, in the fall of last year. That approval was challenged in the courts and unfortunately the, it was uh, annulled on a specific zoning ground by the state Supreme Court judge. So we are here, we have made revisions to the plans uh, in line with what the judge has identified as the issue for the project, the zoning issue for the project, and then uh, submitted that to the planning board and, and would like to proceed with that review. So what, we, uh, what we're requesting here is relief for the moratorium uh, so that we can just proceed with the, the review that has been going on before the, the town's planning board for a, a, a number of years now. Uh, as as we describe in our application, uh, this you know our, our clients have invested in excess of six hundred thousand dollars in this project. There's no really other viable uses of this land. The land is split between the office light industrial district, uh, which doesn't allow any use under the moratorium because everything every use would be required site plan approval from the planning board. Uh, and then there's a portion of it that would be residential, but because no subdivisions would be uh, permitted under the moratorium, only one house could be built. And there's no possible way that anyone could build a house uh, large enough to make a, any return on investment. And given the money that has already been expended by our clients and what we anticipate would uh, be required to be expended to for proceed with just a single house on, on what is a 35 acre portion of this property. Uh, the for so for the moratorium in particular, there were three identified bases for whether, why the moratorium was adopted, which was you know water use, uh, sewer issues with the municipal water, the municipal water and sewer system, and then traffic. Uh, the planning board, you know, for this particular project, we are not proposing to use municipal water or sewer. Uh, the design that was previously approved by the planning board and is still part of this project is to have on-site wells. Uh, and an on-site uh, disposal system that has been reviewed. Uh, the, the planning board went through the whole CEQA process, determined that there are no significant and adverse environmental impacts on water or wastewater. And we also did a traffic study during, during that CEQA review and it found that the, the Route 207 there was sufficient to, to hold the type of traffic that, that our project was proposing. And uh, also found that that would would not the planning board found that that would not have a significant adverse environmental impact at either. That was too challenged in the courts, and the court upheld the planning board secret review the determination there would be no adverse environmental impacts. So that does not would not need to be reviewed again. Uh, all we would be going back to the planning board to do would be to resolve the zoning issue uh, that the court identified for why it needed a, a, a new approval. Uh, for the you know, hardship to the, the clients here, this property is owned uh, by Henry Van Leeuwen, who's uh, using it to our understanding uh, as his estate planning processes. He's got a contract with my client, uh, Stuart Hill LLC, to purchase upon receipt of the approvals. And our fear is uh, if he's delayed another year in even be able to proceed before the planning board, uh, he would be irreparably harmed in the interim because his uh, property would just be standing fallow without any potential use or uh, return on what his contract has been for, for a year, at least a year now. Uh, and then for uh, the, the third basis is why we should be able to proceed before the planning board. You know, the like we said before, the, this has been previously reviewed by the planning board for an environmental uh, aspects and found that there were no issues. Uh, so we would respectfully request that we just be permitted to go back to the planning board to resolve the, the one zoning issue that the court found needed to be resolved before a final approval could be granted. And and really, we, we would have likened this to uh, like a site a subdivision approval that's already gone through the CICRA review and has a final secret determination that's particularly exempted from this moratorium law. Uh, ours is a site plan review, so it's not particularly exempted, which is why we're here, but we think it's it's one in the same. 
uh, in in all instances. So that's you know, sort of a little spiel. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Um, it, does the engineer, your engineer, is he going to speak at all? Or uh, I'm here. For any questions? This is Joe Powell. Okay, Joe. So um, no, I'm pretty familiar with the project. I don't have any questions. I'd ask the board members. Do they have any questions at all? They're pretty familiar with this project too. Okay, um, we'll now open it up for public comment. Before I do that, I'd just like to, for the record, and these emails will be given to the town clerk, Kelly Allegra, that we have, I have five emails here from the residents who are opposed to this project. Um, Kirsten and Robert Wilson have emailed my office today with their objections. <laughs> Sandra Kassam has emailed my office today with her objection. I had an email from um, Rebecca Foster the other day stating her objections. And an email from Beth Rickley stating her objections. And there's one more email from William Istone, I don't know if I pronounced that right, I-S-T-O-N-E. And stating his objections. So these emails will be part of the public record and the town clerk's office will have them. So we'll wait a couple of minutes and see who, if anyone from the public wants to make a statement about this Stewart Hills, Stewart Hill Industrial Park. Anyone from the public? Speak? How do I speak? I would like to make a statement. Okay, right. just say, you say your name and go, go right ahead. My name is Bill McCracken. Uh, I've been a resident of New Windsor since 1990. I live on 601 Station Road, and my wife and I are, are very fortunate to live on a property that's been in my family since 1978. Uh, full disclosure, my property abuts the property that is a subject of this public hearing. Um, I'm speaking tonight because I do not understand why we are having this public hearing. The planning board approval in September 2019 of what was the plan for Stewart Hill Industrial Park was vacated by the New York State Supreme Court in March 2020. The approval was vacated because the design that was Stewart Hill Industrial Park was not and is not permitted under the new Windsor Town Zoning Code for Office and Light Industrial. As a result, there is nothing before the Planning Board at this time. Therefore, a public hearing for relief from moratorium is moot. Furthermore, I do not understand how it is possible to submit a modification to a plan that has been vacated by the New York State Supreme Court as was done in this case in April 2020. There is no plan before the planning board to modify. It would seem to me that the only path forward here would be for a new plan to be submitted to the planning board and the site plan approval process should begin again. Thank you. Okay, Bill, thank you for your comments. Uh, next, uh, Ronald Eaton, anything you wanna say? Ron? It's, Ron, uh, it's Ron Eaton here. I'm from uh, Rock Tavern as well. I live over on Tolman Road. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, the property, in fact, the first building they want to build, building number one, is directly behind my house and uh, Bill Lake's house off of um, Tolman Road. In fact, the document or letter that was sent in to the town shows that that building is actually going to be further expanded. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty upset about that because it's over 200,000 square feet directly behind my property. Um, I agree with what, what uh, Bill McCracken said earlier. First off, there was an injunction to stop clear cutting. Then there was a court order that said the, the plan was vacated. And therefore, uh, honestly, they have to start all over again. Uh, but not only that, it's all the issues that were raised would need to be readdressed. It's not simply a case that you've got a 35 acre plot that is in the middle of a wetland and the septic system that they wanna put on that 35 acres is surrounded by wetland. When you look at the maps they provided you back on July, whatever it was, 
second or 17th or whatever the date was. But the fact is that that septic system will be directly leaching into the waterways that go over to Madonna Creek. So we are vehemently opposed. And I know that in speaking directly with the people from over at Stewart Forest, they are also opposed to any approval of waiving the moratorium. But more another issue too is this developer filed for a notice of appeal to the, to the appeals court of the state of New York. So this matter is still in court and therefore the, the, the town council would be unwise to go forward with approving this when it's already in court. So I thank you for your time tonight. All right, Ron, thank you. Anybody else, Patrick? Stringer, you got anybody? There's uh, John Prespitani. Let you put your dad. Yeah. Okay, John? This, this is new to me, so I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yeah, we got you. Okay. Um, I've been a resident of this area since 1982-ish, and the traffic was such that whenever we heard a siren, we'd run to see what it was. Now it's just about every day and two or three times a day. Shows you the traffic influx. And having all these trucks and stuff around here, it's not going to help the situation with the residents. Okay? Me and myself, I'm planning to get the heck out of this place if I can. Okay? It's not going to be livable. And it's against all common sense to cite this thing where it is. I'm not against industry per se, but I think it's um, a little bit on the large size and um, a little bit too much for the area. If it was going to put in another 15 or 20 homes, that'd be fine, okay? But uh, it's all residential. Uh, just for what it is, uh, it doesn't make sense. And I appreciate you having the time to speak to you, and um, I hope you come up with the right decision. Thank you. John, can you just spell your last name? P is in Peter, R E S T O P I N O. It's a good Irish name. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, sure it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, John. All right, anyone else in that queue there, Patrick? Maria, Maria Dwyer. Maria? Maybe she's muted. She's no? unmuted. Huh? Unmuted? She's unmuted. Maria? Let's see. That's MD, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there someone else? We come back to her? That's it on the public. All right, let me wait a minute, see if she can, if we can pick her up. Is that you? I can say something. Can I say something? Maria? That's MD, right? Okay, is there someone else? We have just signed on. Oh, someone else just signed on? Wait a minute. Is it Donahue? Mr. Donahue. Yes. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, just to let you know that there are other people out here, I wanted to echo what Mr. McCracken had said. Uh, previously, uh, I have lived on Station Road now for 10 years, lived in New Windsor since 1987. Can you stop your Facebook feed in the background? Just close that for now so we can hear you. It's echoying in our conversation here. Previously, uh, I have lived on station now. All right, he's playing Facebook. He's playing the meeting live on Facebook. In the okay, background. okay, and it's echoing. Okay. So, Mr. Donahue, you can hear us. Close that for now. in our conversation here. I can hear you. Okay. All right. We're good. 
Okay. okay. Go ahead, Mr. Donahue. Is he muted now? Can you, can yeah. you hear me? Yes, yeah. now I can. Yes, We're good. go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. If you can see me, I cannot see you guys, but I wanted to echo what Mr. McCracken had said exactly word for word. Okay. Uh, I've been in New Windsor residence since 1987 and without going through all of the details that Mr. McCracken had said uh, uh, very well. Um, I don't know why we're going forward with, with taking a, uh, a look at this. Um, however, um, you know, the traffic implications, there are, there's a school in that area. Um, it's smack in the middle of a residential area. And I understand the 207 is a fairly trafficked road. So is 747, but, um, it's also a residential area with not a lot of industry up there. The, the comment before about wetlands is, uh, completely accurate. Uh, anybody that's been up here on uh, during the fall knows about the hunting that goes on up here. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, let you know that there was somebody else out here. And again, I live in on Station Road, 476 Station Road. And I wanted to just go on record also voicing my concern about moving ahead with this project. Okay, thank you very much. Did uh, Maria come in by any chance? Still not there? Maria, can you hear us? Maria Dwyer? No, is there anybody else out there? Uh, that's it. Katrina, you got anybody? Okay, I thank everybody for their comments and the presentation, and the board will uh, have a formal vote on this at the next uh, town board meeting, which will be in October. So, Chair Lantani, Motion Town Board Town of Windsor closed the public hearing in the matter of the request of Stewart Hill Industrial Park LLC for administrative relief from Local Law Number 1 2020, temporary moratorium. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Rowe? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Okay, at this, this time of the meeting, we're going to have a, any public comments on agenda items. So any items that are on today's agenda, which was posted online a couple of days ago. If anybody wants to speak to any of the agenda items, we'll take a minute or so, see if anybody's interested. Anybody from the public on the call would like to talk to the agenda, you can go ahead and unmute. Okay, Patrick, looks like no one's with us. Okay, so we'll move along. Chair Lantana, motion town board, town and Windsor approved the minutes of the regular town board meeting held on August 5th, 2020, as for copies of those minutes posted on the town board board in the town hall, same having been distributed to each of the town board members. Motion? Move. Second. Okay. Yes. Councilman Monroe? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Okay. Chair Lentani, motion Town Board, Town of Windsor, authorize the supervisor to execute a tax agreement between the County of Orange and the Town of Windsor for snow and ice control on certain county roads for the 2021 season. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Monroe? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. So this is the county will be paying the town about $14,000 since this Union Avenue. We, we take care of that road in the winter, snow and ice removal. How does the receiving file? Hearing no objections, Town Board Town of Windsor receiving file a maintenance bond from Selective Insurance Company of America in the amount of $3,000. $355,680 for Stonecrest Drive and Hilltop, Hilltop Drive drainage project, community development block grant for the year 2019. This is just a bond that's posted to make sure that all the work is done and completed to the satisfaction of our town engineer. 
Shall I entertain a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. This is receiving file. Hear no objections. Town board town the winds receiving file utility and access easement from motor speed motorcyclopedia to the town of the winds of dated July 17, 2020, recorded in the Orange County Clerk's Office on the 20th day of July 2020 in Libra 14778 at page 50. This is an easement that we needed over on um, 32. And I'd like to thank Ted Doran for giving us this easement. And this will help us when the aqueduct is shutting down in uh, November. We'll be able to draw some water from the city of Newburgh if we get in trouble. General Lincoln, a motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, call for a public hearing regarding proposed changes to section 280-5C and 280-8A of the Town Code of the Town of Windsor entitled Vehicle and Traffic, Main Arteries of Travel, and No Parking on Certain Streets, respectively. Said public hearing to be held on October 7th, 2020 at 7 p.m., either in person or video conference and, and teleconference on the same date and time, with a link to like log in and participate by computer and phone number and access code to call in, participate by telephone made available to the public by the town clerk in a timely manner pursuant to law in accordance with the resolution attached here to motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum. Yes. Councilman Monroe. Yes. Councilman Bedetti. Yes. Councilwoman Santiago. Yes. Supervisor Myers. Yes, uh, this is a uh, local law that we'll be doing to uh, install some new stop signs that are a result of residents' requests and the, uh, the police department making some requests to the town board and some uh, no parking signs that also were requested by some residents and requested by our police department. So I have a public hearing on this in October, and if all is well, we'll get those signs up. Shall I entertain a motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, authorize the town clerk to advertise pursuant by two law calling for sealed bids for the Town of the Windsor Ambulance Building, HFAC project, which shall be received in public open on the 24th day of September 2020 at 2 p.m. local time at the office of the Town of the Windsor Town Clerk, 555 Union Avenue, New Windsor, New York, in recognition of Executive's Order 202.11, 202.55, and 202.55, issued by the Governor's State. The bid opening may not be open to the public. If practical, the town will try in the live stream the bid opening on its Facebook page. The town board, town of the winds, reserves the right reserves the right to reject any and all bids. Motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum. Yes. Councilman Monroe. Yes. Councilman Bedetti. Yes. Councilwoman Santiago. Yes. Supervisor Myers. Yes, this the ambulance building is actually owned by the town. So the, the town of New Windsor owns that building that they're in. So there's some issues with the uh, the heating and, and air conditioning there that we're going to try and resolve for them because they they respond out of that meeting, uh, out of that building. And uh, it's been a little difficult for them, especially this summer with not much air conditioning. All right, Jill, entertain a motion, town board, town of the Windsor, whereas here, Heretofore, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has issued a general permit governing stormwater discharges from construction activities identified as GP020001, the general permit, and which requires the preparation and implementation, implementation of the stormwater pollution prevention plan. For the first meeting, the threshold set forth in the general permit. Whereas the town of the Windsor is a municipal separate storm has, has a separate municipal separate storm sewer system community as that term is defined by the DEC. Whereas prior to obtaining coverage under the general permit, an applicant must obtain a certificate by the MS4 official, which is the principal executor or ranking elected or duly authorized representative there too, certifying that this SWPP for the construction project has been reviewed and meets the substantial requirements of the general permit. And whereas the SWPPPS are Presently reviewed by the town engineer, and whereas the town board, town of the Windsor, pursuant to part E1, I'm sorry, pursuant to part 7 H2 of general plan, which is to designate the town engineer as a duly authorized representative of the MS4 official for general permit certification problem purposes. Now, therefore, be resolved as follows Town board does hereby appoint the town engineer Michael W. Weeks, a professional engineer, McGowie House of Edsel PC, as the town's. SWPP review officer and is duly authorized representative of the town's MS4 
core official for general permit certification. The town, the town supervisor being hereby authorized to execute any or all documents necessary to effectuate this appointment and that the SWPP review officer shall be entitled to all protections set forth in the town code chapter 16, defense and indemnification. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Monroe? Yes. Councilman Bidelli? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. This has to do with the um, some contractors were having our engineer look at some things and we, we are char back charging them for that. So that's why we have to pass this. So now we'll back charge anybody who talks to our engineer. That's basically what we should talk. Chair Lantana, Motion Town Board, Town of Windsor, authorized the supervisor to execute a New York State master contract for grants between the Town of New Windsor, the State of New, York, of New York, for the New York State Governor's Traffic Safety Committee's Police Traffic Services Program in the amount of $14,918, effective October 1st, 2020 through September 30th, 2020. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum. Yes. Councilman Monroe. Yes. Councilman Bedetti. Yes. Councilwoman Santiago. Yes. Supervisor Myers. Yes, this is a grant we get from the state for overtime for our police officers to work for our blocks of overtime for uh, traffic work. So to ensure that the speed limits and, and the other uh, traffic signs are obeyed in town. So it's a break for us. We don't have to pay the over the state sends us 14,000. Chair Lantana, Chair Lantana, Motion Town Board, Town of Windsor, authorized the town clerk to advertise pursuant to law, calling for sealed bids for the purchase of one 2020 or newer Harley Davidson electric glide motorcycle. Bids shall be received and publicly opened on September 29th, 2020, at 1 p.m. at the office of the town clerk, 555 Union Avenue, New Windsor, New York. Although the town board reserves the right to forego of the usual requirement of public opening bids in light of COVID-19 pandemic. Pursu pursuant to executive order 202.11 and, and to reject any roll of bids. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum. Yes. Councilman Monroe. Yes. Councilman Bedetti. Yes. Councilwoman Santiago. Yes. Supervisor Myers. Yes. The uh, town board is interested in purchasing a new motorcycle for our police department. The uh, One of the motorcycles that we have is pretty long in the tooth. Kind of like your supervisor and we kind of need a new one and these motorcycles do come in handy for us especially working some uh traffic problems throughout town people see the police car but sometimes they don't see the motorcycle so we'll see how these bids come in chair lantana motion town board town the winds are hereby amend the 2020 standard the schedule fees as follows and direct the town clerk to revise the standard schedule fees accordingly these are all water meter and accessory prices sub change and it's different sizes of meters that mostly, not mostly, I think they're all commercial meters and um, tap inspections. And um, so all taps, $250 plus cost of meter, remote and tail pieces, flange key furnished by the town, no other materials or any labor shall be provided. Remote metering device for existing water meters, which includes installation by the town, $200 and a five inch water meter. $179 and liability for repairs. The replacement of a 5 8 damage damage acts or other damage $179. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Monroe? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Chair Lantana, Motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, authorized the supervisor to execute a third amended lease between the Town of the Windsor and New York State Arc Incorporated, Orange County Chapter of Lease, for the lease of 930 Raz Avenue for the term of one year. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Monroe? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Yes, this is the building that the town has uh, come into possession of through the federal government that we rent out to ARC and the lease will be for one year. 
regarding proposed local law to override the tax and establish in the general mutual law section 3c5 to be held on october 7th 2020 at 7 p.m either in person at town hall 555 Avenue in Windsor, New York, or by video conference and teleconference on the same date and time with link to log on and participate by computer and phone number and access code to call in and participate by telephone, made available to the public by the town clerk in a timely manner pursuant to law in accordance with the resolution annexed here too. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Crow? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes, this is an annual thing, that, uh, a motion that we have to do just in case that we go override the tax levy. And uh, if we don't override it, then we'll, we'll just cancel this. But this has little meaning other than it just gives us a little bit of an option. So we have to see how the budget works out this year. Everybody knows we, like everybody else, is in a little bit of trouble with the budget. So. We'll see what we can do with this. The town boards are working pretty hard on it, and hopefully we'll be okay. General entertain a motion town board town of Windsor authorize the town of the Windsor Justice Court to apply for a JCAP grant in the 2020 and 2021 grant cycle up to $30,000 for the exact amount being requested. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Monroe? <coughs> yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes, this is a grant that the Justice Court is applying for. It's up to 30,000. I, I guess we'll be lucky to get 10. I'd be happy to get anything. So the state of New York is not in very good shape either. So we'll have to see what kind of grants that they're coming down with. Right. Receiving file. Hear me no objection. Town Board, Town of Windsor. Receiving file. The town Clerk, the attached final proposals. Received in public open via live stream on the Town of New Windsor Facebook on August 24, 2020, for the sale of a town owned property located at 18 Snake Hill Road, New Windsor, New York. And further identified on the Town of New Windsor tax, map as, tax maps as section 9, block 1, lot 104.2. Talk to this in a minute. Chill and take a motion to Town Board, Town of New Windsor. Whereas on June 3rd, Town Board Town of Windsor authorized the advertising for proposal to purchase a town owned property located at 18 Snake Hill Road in Windsor, New York, as identified at Town of Windsor as a tax map section 9, block 1, and lot 1042, and formerly known as the Masonic Lodge. Whereas, per the request for proposals, the board reserved the unconditional right to accept or reject any or all proposals. Whereas, one final proposal was received and public opened in the town clerk's office. Town Hall 555 Union in New Windsor, New York on August 24th at 12 p.m. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Town Board Town of New Windsor hereby reject the loan final proposal received and direct the Town Controller's Office to return the down payment provided in the such proposal. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Monroe? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Myers. Yes, this last two things have to do with the, trying to sell that Masonic Lodge. We don't, we didn't think that the um, offer was good enough, so we rejected the bid, and we're gonna go back and try and market it. Again. So we'll we'll stay on this till we uh, get rid of that building. All right, receive and file. Him no Jackson Town Board Town of the Windsor shall receive and file with the town clerk the attached monthly reports for the following departments for August 2020. Justice Calderon, Justice Myers, the Police Department, Building Department, Recreation Department, Tax Receiver Utility Report, Town Clerk, and then the Windsor Volunteer Ambulance Corps. I was looking through these reports today, and it, it always amazes me that we actually arrested four people for DWI in town last month. So they're still out there. They still haven't got the message, and they probably will never get the message. But I, I just don't know how anybody can continue to drink and drive when there's Uber and there's all kinds of people that you call to, to get you moving. <coughs> so that being said, now we have a public forum, which the public can comment on any item whatsoever that they wish to speak to. So I'll wait a couple of minutes to see if anybody uh, wants to speak to something. Two people on the call. Okay, so 
Do we have a name or no? Yeah. Uh, John T. O'Malley, you can go ahead and talk. Mr. O'Malley. Yes, hello, how are you doing? Very well, Mr. O'Malley, how are you? I'm sorry that I couldn't get on uh, earlier. I was having some technical problems. I wanted to talk at the earlier public hearing, which I know is too late now. So no, no, I'm going to make some... Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, uh, I'm, I'm, I wanted to make some comments regarding the Stewart Hill uh, moratorium. Is that still in order? Yes, yes absolutely. Fair. So first, I just wanted to say that um, uh, I'm confused as to why the petitioners asked for the moratorium in the first place, because it seems to me that um, we have a path that we've been traveling along. There was a plan. They went through all the reviews, the secret, the DOT, all that kind of stuff. And uh, the planning uh, department gave them conditional approval. And uh, and then when we went to court, the judge overruled that. And um, you know, the judge didn't say make a modification and then go back and retry it. The judge said that um, the decision was not only arbitrary, but also an abuse of the discretion of the uh, planning board. And so um, she, she said that the, that the decision of the planning board should be vacated, which to me means that that plan is over. It's dead and over. And if somebody wants to come up with a new plan for that land, they can certainly do that, but they'd have to start at the beginning. They'd have to get a new plan, get a new secret, get a, you know, do the whole thing. If, if I'm wrong, which of course is possible, I mean, I'm just a lay person, then, um, you know, perhaps, you know, thinking about the merits of some of the discussion that went on is important. And some of the stuff that I hear, I find a hard time discerning from the petitioners, you know, which is it? Is it a new plan or is it a modified plan? In certain places, they say uh, that it's a modified plan, that they just want to keep moving forward. In other places, they say, no, this is a whole new uh, situation. So it's kind of difficult to figure out um, you know, which way they're trying to go. And I think that um, if the judge's ruling is going to stand, you know, they certainly appealed, they, they made notice that they're going to appeal it. They have a path to move forward with that. And the path is not to modify this plan. So I think they should do one of two things. They should appeal the judge's ruling, or they should come up with an entirely new plan and start the process from the beginning. And in both cases, this moratorium question is really moot because it doesn't apply to either one. So thank you very much. I appreciate you letting me speak uh, a little bit later. Um, and I'm sorry that I couldn't get on before. No, we'll uh, enter your comments. Thank you. Uh, thanks, John. Is there anybody else here, Patrick? Uh, Ronnie Eaton's still on. Ron? Anybody else? Uh, Keith Palusa. Oh. There you go again, Patrick. Keith? <clears throat> yes. Okay, you just say your, your last name, please. Uh, last name is Peloso, P-E-L-O-S-O. -O. Okay, how you doing, Keith? Very good. Okay, what can we do for you? Uh, well, just basically echoing what was just said, uh, you know, I had difficulty getting on, so I apologize for that. But, uh, you know, I, I don't quite understand why uh, the board would be entertaining, uh, a, I, I guess, a, a relief from the moratorium uh, if there is not even a, a valid uh, permit. You know, that was all vacated by the Supreme Court judge. So until they can, you know, get that rectified, which they've expressed that they, uh, they have an intent to appeal, uh, but uh, until that's done, it just doesn't seem like they have their ducks in a row for you folks even to entertain that thought. That's that's basically it. I'm I'm a disgruntled homeowner adjoining the property, so I'm not very happy with uh, the plans there. Okay, we'll lend to your comments under the public hearing for that Stuart Hill. Thank you, um, Patrick. Is that yeah. it? No, wait a minute. See, Brad pops up. What happened to Maria? She signed off. Oh, she signed off. Gave up on us. Huh. I have a, another email that came in in objecting, objecting to this uh, project from Cynthia 
Lakehorn, and her email will also be made part of the public record at, on the town clerk's office. So I'm guessing that there's um, no more comments on the uh, agenda items. So I'll make, I'll just ask the board if there's anything that they would like to say. Uh, Andrew Rigenbaum? No, thank you. Okay, Steve Moreau? I'm good, thank you. Sylvia Santiago? I'm good, thank you. Stephen Bedetti? Surprisingly, no. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, I have just a couple of quick comments. One is that we have decided to have hold a concert on September 16 at 6 p.m. at Town Hall. So we weren't able to do them this season because of the COVID. So we're going to try one and hopefully we can keep the uh, distancing going and uh, we'll try one. It'll be from 6 to uh, 6 to 7.30. And on September 12th, we have a band and fireworks out at the uh, Christie Babcock Park. And then there'll be a final movie, drive-in movie out there that following Saturday. And um, it, we, we all kind of feel bad that we weren't able to do a lot this season because of the uh, COVID. But we were trying to protect our employees and our residents. And uh, so far, so good. But we're going to try a couple of things now just before the year ends. And on a, another note, there was a post on a Facebook page, I think, of the towns where someone said that we were not returning phone calls or emails, and that's totally false. There's not a day goes by that I don't return every phone call for every person that calls my office. And if the town board gets a call, they return the calls. And emails are answered probably that same day, as long as they get to me. Um, so. It was a group who said they were wondering if we were going back to the old ways. No, I answer everything. I'm, my door's open. I'm here all the time. So anybody who needs to see me or talk to me or converse with me, I do it. Sometimes you're not crazy about my answer, but you will never be able to say that George Myers did not call you back. So I just wanted to make that point that we, this board and myself and all our elected officials now, Kelly Allegra and Anthony Feo and, and, and Susan Scheibel, we pride ourselves in answering and and getting back to all our residents. So that being said, Chair Lentang and Motion Town Board Town to Windsor adjourn the town board meeting at um, 7.48 p.m. Motion. Move. Move. Oh, so oh, let's do it. Roll call. Councilman oh. Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Fidetti? Yes. Santiago? Yes. Civil Myers. Yes. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Todd Wiley, for coming tonight. And we'll see you next time.